page 310.
Good evening, Mount Bethel. Good evening. It's good to be back in God's house. Good to have this opportunity. Nice warm building to come into. Comfortable pews to sit in. Ought to be in God's house if we could be, people. I need it. I need it more and more every day, and I realize it more and more every day. I wonder if anybody has a prayer request on your heart and you'd just like to uplift your hand. Each and every one of us. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for the cross. And Lord, there's many that couldn't make it out for whatever reason tonight, Lord. We just pray that you touch and heal them in a mighty way, Lord. And those that are sick, Lord, and those that are going through battles right now, and Lord, most of all, those that maybe have lost battles, we just pray that you strengthen and comfort and go by their side, Lord, each and every step of the way. And Lord, there are spiritual battles that we face each and every day, Lord, and we just need to let your light and your truth shine in our lives, Lord, each and every day. Lord, I pray that you be with this service. May it uplift and praise your holy name because you're worthy of all of our praise. It's all this that we pray in Jesus' sweet and holy name. Amen. I wonder if anybody has a song or testimony on your heart tonight. I'll say I woke up Thanksgiving morning thinking about John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that whosoever, I'm glad he, he came for the, uh, these whosoever's. Amen. For the lost, for the downtrodden, for those that don't deserve it, I'm so glad he came for the whosoever. I thank God. I'm, I'm thankful for his salvation. Amen. He didn't have to, but he loved us that much. It ain't anything that we could do. We couldn't earn it if we tried. Amen. He paid each and every Praise cent him. of it for Praise us with him. his precious blood. Yes, and I thank him for that tonight. Yes, he did. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody else got anything on your heart tonight to share with the Lord? ask y'all to help me pray a uh, young lady at work uh, one of her good friends is going through a battle right now she's got a I'll say a child a 12 13 year old girl that's uh, in a mental hospital right now and she's tried to take her life three different times and came really close twice I'll tell you it's scary what these kids are going through nowadays it scares me for my kids but it scares me for all youngins it, it was rough and difficult growing up for me. I can't imagine what they go through. And they, they need our prayers, not just this young lady and this family, but all of our youth. There's a, a black world out there, and the devil would love nothing more than to consume them in it. Amen. We need to pray for them. Anyone else tonight? I thank God for saving my soul and for being here tonight. Amen. Uh, when I got back to work on Monday, I had a bunch of stuff in my chair that had came while I was out of work. And on the package, one of the packages, there was this little sticker that said, thank God for the unknown blessings already on their way. Amen. And I thought, you know, Amen. that's so true. It Amen. is, yeah. Our septic tank messed up Saturday. And the people said it was going to be Tuesday before they could get to it. Well, Danny called me Monday and said the guy was on his way to come and clean it out. Hayden's truck tore up the next day, or it might have even been the same night. He was backing out of a friend's driveway, and he said something popped, and then his truck wouldn't steer. And I thought, well, thank God he wasn't driving down the road. Amen. So the Lord sent the unknown blessings already was Amen. on the way. Not just kind of held on to that. Already. Amen. 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 It's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is good. Anyone else tonight? If not, be much.
much in prayer for Brother Dwayne. Bless your heart. We got one of them uh, loose fiber masks tonight. It was tickling, tickling my nose. Tell you, appreciate the Lord tonight. You've been good to us. Appreciate the testimonies. God's God's very good to us, and and uh, sometimes those uh, blessings we don't re we don't recognize them when they do come. But I'm glad I'm glad they come too, and we are to thank the Lord for it uh, each and every day. It's uh, countless blessings every day that God sends to His children. And uh, not because we deserve it, because he loves us. Because he loves us, and I'm glad he does. And uh, we uh, appreciate the Lord. Appreciate the Lord tonight. And uh, we're going to go back to Hebrews. And uh, we'll get done with this when we get done with it. So uh, it'll be all right. It's uh this word of God don't get old, does it? Amen. Just like John three sixteen, I, 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 I've heard it a, a gazillion times in my life, and it's never got old because it tells me of the love of God. And I thank you, thank the Lord for that, and thank you for His mercy and grace tonight. But uh, just one verse tonight, and and uh, well, well, we'll read verse two and verse three, and we're going to look at primarily verse three for a few minutes. Uh, this evening and you pray for us I want to say this we appreciate those that are, that are watching from home we, have, we hope you're doing well and get well if you're sick and, and we're going to get through this uh, pandemic I remember about a year ago at work uh, they called me and uh, wanted to know what our department's pandemic plan was I said, I don't reckon we got one. What's a pandemic? I didn't even know. And now it's on everybody's lips, on everybody's minds. And, and uh, we know what one is now, don't we? And I don't know how, I don't know why they asked me that a year ago, but I know why they asked me. I wouldn't want to know now. But anyway, uh, God, it ain't, it ain't nothing to God. He can handle it. So, so chapter 12, again, of Hebrews, I'm looking at verse 2 and 3. And uh, you may hear this. You may hear this verse again Sunday. But looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse three says, "For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, and himself, lest ye be wearied." and faith in your minds. You may be seated, your Heavenly Father. We ask you, Lord, tonight to open this scripture up to us that we might have a greater understanding, a greater desire for God, and that we would look to Jesus like never before. Help us to understand this. Give us what we need to say, and we'll do our best to praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Consider, consider him. We, we talked Sunday about looking unto Jesus and uh, we talked about Moses and how, how Moses' focus was on God. That's what got him, that's why he was such a great leader. Uh, Moses, uh, the, the Bible teaches us that Moses was the meekest man in all the world. You wouldn't think that when you read about his life, but, but he had a God, he had a great big God and we do too. And so, uh, so if we'll keep our eyes on the Lord, we can stay focused and we can get through no matter what the world throws at us, can't we? But in verse 3, I, I, I've, I've thought about this and just uh, uh, can't get it off our heart, but he says, Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Now, the second part of that verse is very important. 
Because I believe this, uh, there's a lot of folks that are weary. And there, there's a lot of folks that, that are just about wearied with the journey, to be honest, right now. There's a lot of folks who are discouraged, a lot of folks who are maybe at the end of the rope. A lot of folks, uh, you know, this, uh, this uh, past year has been tough uh, physically and mentally uh, and, and as well as <clears throat> financially for a lot of folks. And, and it's, it'd be awful easy to get to a point where we're just tired. We're just tired. I would imagine tonight that most folks that are here tonight are tired. Are you tired? <clears throat> I'm tired too. I'm weary. But I'm not weary in the journey. I want to I want to keep on keeping on for the Lord, don't you? Amen. <clears throat> now we're fighting a frog in our throat tonight, so you pray for us. We're not going to let the devil <clears throat> defeat us. But he said, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Now, he didn't say faint in body. He didn't say uh, faint in spirit. Thank you. <clears throat> but he said faint in your minds. A lot of times we get to a point in our life where, where it just gets our minds get overwhelmed. Our minds get to a point where they just want to check out for a little while. Mine, mine checked out a long time ago. How about you? <clears throat> but we better not check out on Jesus. We better not get to a point where we just give up, give up living for God. I, I, I believe this. I believe if there's a time when we need God, it's, it's now. But it's something how that many folks, when they need God the most, is when they're most likely to turn away from God. Things ain't going right for me, preacher. I, I'm just, I'm throwing in the towel. I'm giving up. Well, when things ain't going, or going right, you think they're going to get any better if we don't have Jesus? You think it's going to improve if we don't have Jesus? So when we're in, when we're in danger of feigning in our mind, we better do what the Bible says. And the Bible says this, consider him. Consider him. When we think about the Lord, when we think about how much God loves us, when we think about what Jesus did for us, it ought to strengthen us. And it ought to encourage us and it ought, to, it ought to get us strong once again. I was coming down the road to church tonight, and, and, I, and I looked over at the mountains, and, uh, and they looked so cold. And the snow was on them, and uh, the, uh, no doubt ice and wind, and it was cold looking. And I thought about that, that hill that Jesus walked up one day. And I thought about how it was cold that morning because what we find is many warming themselves, Peter included, by the fire and Jesus out there stripped down and beaten and, and blood running down his brow, down his body and a crown of thorn upon his head stripped down to nothing and yet still willing to go to an old rugged cross because, because of our sin. Think about the scene. Think about what was going on when, as Jesus took the punishment for sin. Think about the the uh, 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 the, the beating that he took and and sin. Even Peter warming himself as he st stood there being whipped, being tormented, being mocked, being made fun of through the night, and then taken to an old rugged cross. And hanging there and bleeding and dying with the shame, the shame of the world's sin upon him, consider him. I want to say this tonight. If we would consider what Jesus did for us, 
and we would consider what Jesus is doing for us, and we would consider what he took in our place, I believe it would get us up and make us march forward for the Lord. I believe it would get our minds strong again and get our hearts strong again and get our, 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 uh, our courage strong again and get, get, our, get us to, uh, once again to where we can go forward for the Lord and not faint in our mind. There's no wonder the Bible says looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. There's no wonder in verse 3 it says consider him. Now, what, what does he say to consider about him? He says consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. I want you to think about that for just a minute. What did Jesus do to deserve the 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 punishment that he received. What did Jesus do to deserve the mockery? What did Jesus ever do to deserve the beatings? What did Jesus do to deserve the, the, the shame that he took upon himself in our place? What did he do? That's a contradiction. He was the lamb without spot and without blemish, and yet he took on the, the judgment of the world. He was, the one, he was the only one that ever walked this, world, walked this earth without any sin whatsoever. And yet he took the ultimate punishment for sin, death and shame, death even on a cross, death on the cross of Calvary. What did Jesus do? It's a contradiction to think about the suffering that, that he took upon himself. As a matter of fact, you go back to his entire life. He was born King of Kings and Lord of Lords, was he not? And yet he was placed in a, in a, in a stable, placed in a manger in a, in a stable as, as, a, as a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes by his virgin, uh, uh, virgin mother, Mary. He lived a perfect and sinless life. He went about doing good, the Bible said, and yet he was hated by the world. The Bible said he came in his own. His own received him not. But I thank God it said as, as many as received him, uh, as many as received him yet became the sons of God. And so today there's a contradiction in the world. There's a contradiction right now in the world. We look around and, and the, our heroes are the, are the, are the, are the uh, football players and basketball players and musicians are our heroes are not the, uh, the, the faithful, but, but the, filth, uh, the filthy in a lot of cases. So, so there's contradictions in the world. He took on the contradiction of sinners. In other words, it's, it was contrary what he put up with and what he had to do to save us from our sin. The cross that, that, that he died on was, was made for somebody else. It was made for Barabbas, was it not? The grave that, that he laid in for three days was dug out for somebody else. He was, he was God. He couldn't, uh, he could, they couldn't have uh, uh, taken his life. He had to give his life and give it freely. The judgment that he received, it was a judgment that, that me and you deserve, not him. He never done anything wrong. He never, there was never even gu any guile found in his mouth. There was never evil thought in his mind, in his heart. He was perfect and pure and holy. It was a contradiction that he took on the sin of the world. It was a contradiction that he took on the judgment of the world. It was a contradiction that he died for sinners by the hands of sinners. And I want to say this tonight. If we'll think about what Jesus did for us, it'll keep us from fainting in our minds, amen, and keep us moving toward uh, the, the, the pressing toward the mark, as Apostle, Apostle Paul said. And so, so, so it's a contradiction. I thought about this. The, the very vilest sinners uh, uh, casting judgment on the, on the holy of holies, amen, on the holiest of all, the one that never sinned, the most wicked uh, uh, casting judgment on, on the most wonderful, the lamb without spot dying for the unjust, 
dying for the ungodly, dying for the unrighteous, dying uh, for the most filthy, the pure, holy Lamb of God. No spot whatsoever found on him. It, it was a, it was a, a, a contradiction. And, and, you know, that's the way the world is. The world filled with darkness and God sent light and the world loved darkness greater than light and then killed the prince of light. So I want to say this tonight. If we forget about what Jesus has done for us, if we first of all, we forget about why he died. Amen. He died because we were sinners. Amen. He died because I was a sinner. He died because I was ungodly. He died because I deserved hell and I deserved the grave. But Jesus took it for me. That's, that was a contradiction. Amen. He was, it was a contradiction uh, uh, that, that, that he took on because he loved me and you. Ain't you glad he did? Amen. Ain't you glad he did? The world, the world thinks we're silly. For, for following Jesus. The world thinks we don't know what we're talking about when we tell them they must be born again. The world don't think that we have any comprehension. Matter of fact, the world looks at us as, as a, 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 we're just a, a, a superstitious and, and we're, we're scared of death and so we make up a God. We make up a Savior. We make up... Uh, this ideal of, of, a, of a way to a place that they don't believe in, uh, a, a heaven, they don't believe in it. We, we, uh, uh, we just made all this up to make ourselves feel better. But I got news for the world. One of these days, the, the, they, they think they're so smart. They think they know so much. But one of these days, they're going to find out what a contradiction that their mind uh, was in. Amen. They're going to realize that, that what we said and what the Bible said was true. After all, I've been reading uh, 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 some quotes from some atheists uh, that, that were dying in the last few days. I've, I've read a uh, famous atheist and, and many of them had, who had stood before people and had a, a followings of, of atheist societies and people who, who uh, uh, they get together just to, just to share their unbelief in God. But many of them, as they were dying, were crying out for mercy. Many of them were crying out. Oh, now, one said, no, now I do believe. Don't tell me there's no God and there's no hell because I now feel the judgment of God in the flames of hell. I want to say this tonight. We better wake up world and we better wake up church. And we better wake up America and we better realize that there is a God in heaven that loves us enough to give his only begotten son that we can have life everlasting. But that same God, that same God that loves us that much, one day after a while, we'll all stand before God and we'll give an account for the for the idle deeds done in this body and the words spoken by this mouth and the thoughts that come through this mind and the filth of the heart. We'll all stand before God and without this man, Jesus, none of us have any hope of anything but hell. I'm glad to know today that Jesus loved me enough, amen, to take on the sin of the world, to take on the filth that should have, that was on me and nailed it to his cross and died for my sin. But I thank God something else happened, amen. On that third and appointed morning, Jesus Christ arose. That grave couldn't hold him. That stone couldn't hold him back. Death couldn't hold him. The devil couldn't do nothing about it and he came forth victorious over death hell and the grave and now he reigns in my heart and he reigns in the church and he reigns praise God for us old foolish Christians amen they say we don't know nothing but praise God I might not know much but I know who saved me and I know who bought me and I know who paid for me today and I know at the end of the road praise God there's going to be a place called heaven where there's no COVID, where there's no death, where there's no dying, where there's no sin, where we're going to live with Christ forevermore. Ain't that good news tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel a little better now. I feel a little better now. 
He endured, he endured looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And he says, and for consider him that endured. Jesus endured. Somebody said, oh, and nobody knows what I'm going through. Listen, you ain't went through what Jesus went through. Everything I went through, I deserved it and more. But what Jesus went through, he didn't deserve it all. He, not want, he didn't deserve any of the mockery. As a matter of fact, when he was hanging on that cross, if he had wanted to, if he had wanted to, he could have called down legions of angels and they'd have delivered him from that cross. And you know what? But he loved us too much to do that. All those that were making fun of him, those that were standing out there cursing him, those that were standing out there saying, oh, if he really be the son of God, come down from that cross. Those that, the, those that laughed at him, those that wagged their heads at him, those that came by and, 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 and just mocked him, all those, he loved them so much that he stayed on that cross and bled and died. And me and you, when we were yet sinners, he stayed on that cross and bled and died. Me the wickedest of the wicked. Amen. He stayed on that cross and died for the sin of all mankind. And now, and now because we have a year where things don't go too good, folks are going to quit on God. We have a year that uh, where folks are sick and even some lost their lives and, and we're going to quit on God. Amen. I'm going to say this. I've never seen anything in this world that makes me want to quit on God. Have you? I believe I'll just keep on keeping on. Amen. You say, well, you don't know what you're going to face in 2021. I don't need to know what I'm going to face in 2021 because my God's already there. He's already there and already he already knows what's there and he's got... He's got blessings coming, coming in the mail, ain't he? He's got blessings coming uh, uh, everywhere we look if we'll just trust in him. But we gotta, we gotta, we gotta keep our mind on him and not faint in our mind and not faint in our heart and not give it up, not lay it down, not quit. Keep up, keep up, keep it going, keep it going for Jesus. I promise you. When we get through all this, we'll look back and say, "Boy, I'm glad I trusted the Lord. I'm glad I never th threw it in the towel." I'm glad I never fainted in my mind. I'm glad I kept my mind uh, where it needed to be with God. He said, consider him that endures this contradiction of sinners against himself. Against himself. He took it on himself. Everything they threw at him, he took it and endured it because he loves you and he loves me. Ain't that good to know? And, he, and then he says this, and I'm going to close. It's going to be a quickie tonight. You get, get to go home early uh lest you be weird and faint in your minds you know uh god was concerned with folks quitting uh, god was concerned there's a lot of folks couldn't go to hell if they wanted to they they say but you know what my bible tells me that we can quit we can quit this thing and i don't want to quit do you he said lest you be uh, weird in your mind, lest you, lest you uh, be weird and faint in your mind, lest you give it up, lest you quit, lest you quit. He, he gives us this thought of Jesus, and I want you to think about it. Every time, every time the devil says, why don't you quit, you think about what Jesus done to, to give you life. Every time the devil says, why don't you just throw in a towel, I want you to think about what Jesus endured just for me and you because he loves us so much and wants us to make it. He wants us to make it. And I believe, I believe we can if we'll trust in him. How about you? Amen. How about you? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we've given what you've given us. And so we're going to get out of the way. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd uh, send this home with the folks that are here. Send it to the homes or folks that are not here. And, Lord, let, let, let us just uh, keep our mind on you and keep our hearts on you. And, and no matter what uh, comes our way, we know that Jesus is here with us and here for us and he loves us so i thank you god for taking on this my sin and i thank you for taking on the sin of the of the scribes and the pharisees and old Pilate too you took on all the sin of the world nailed it to the cross so we could have life but i also know jesus that that you you may have the eye the heart of a lamb and the eyes of a dove when you were here but but I also know one day after a while you're coming back with eyes as a flame of fire. It tells us in the book of Revelation and God to bring judgment 
to this world. And so I thank you, Lord, that we're safe and protected in the arms of Jesus if we'll continue to live for you and faint not in our minds. We love you. Ask all this and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good night. God bless you. <clears> Thank <throat>